The festive month of football continues as fourth place Scunthorpe United head to Ewood Park to take on third place Blackburn Rovers. We'll talk about that match and more on today's show. <laughs> That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview, this time building up to the big playoff or promotion six pointer in League One between Scunthorpe United and Blackburn Rovers. But before I get into the thick of things, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. This is game three of four for Blackburn over this sort of uh, tight fixture congestion period of the year where we uh, we play like an, an insane amount of games in, in such a few days. Uh, after this one, it's the away trip to Rotherham, which will be on New Year's Day, the first game of 2018. But let's don't get ahead of ourselves. Right now, we've got a big one. Uh, against fourth place Scunthorpe, a game that's it's actually uh, going to be quite a tough one to talk about. Anyway, let's just dig into the the thick of things here. <laughs> so the match takes place at Ewood Park on the 30th of December, which will be the Blackburns' final game of 2017. Obviously, we suffered uh, the horrific relegation back in May, but hopefully now we're going to turn a corner and start 2018 with a bang and get ourselves back out of this division. But before then, we've got, to, we've got to start getting the points, and that includes getting an important three points against Scunthorpe at Ewood Park on Saturday. Uh, last time out, Scunthorpe actually finished third place, so they're doing around about the same sort of standard as they did last year. Uh, top goal scorer is Dwayne Holmes with seven goals. The man pulling the strings still is Graham Alexander. Obviously, Blackburn Rovers and Scunthorpe met earlier this year at Scunthorpe's ground. Uh, but over the years, they've met four times. Blackburn now running two of them. They've only lost the one, and the two sides have drawn over the years. Uh, last time out, the last two matches at Ewood Park uh, ended like this. Well, in fact, this is the only two times that these two t two teams have met at Ewood Park. Or the last time they met was all the way back in 2014. Blackburn Rovers actually lost to Scunthorpe United in the League Cup. But before that, all the way back 1972, Blackburn Rovers picked up a three-nil. Uh, victory and that was back in the old Division 3 and that took place 35th of September just in case you've taken down some notes. As for <laughs> the starting <laughs> 11 for Black Rovers, this is how I feel they will start. Uh, Ryer and Goal, Naimbi, Downing, Mulgrew and Williams. Uh, Bennett, Smallwood, Tomlinson for me gets the nod, Bradley Dack, uh, Dominic Samuel and Marcus Antonison. The centre midfield partnership for Smallwood is, is still up for grabs in my eyes. Whittingham does an okay job, Evans does an okay job. Now Tomlinson's coming in, uh, he offers a bit more youth, maybe a bit of uh, fresh legs. Uh, and right now with the games coming in thick and fast, it's, it's a good uh, opportunity for, for, for Tony to rotate that uh, accompanying spot alongside Smallwood. Obviously you don't want to drop Smallwood, he's been one of the standout players of the season for, in my eyes anyway. Uh, also, any other changes? Yes, up front, Dominic Samuel again. I don't think, I don't think we've got a, a settled strike striker. You know, back in the day, we would have Jordan Rhodes or Ru Rudy Gestead up front. Um, we don't really have a player that is undroppable up front. Obviously, Bradley Dak is in that sort of wandering role where he gets, he gets it all over the, all over the pitch, and that's great. I love, love having that sort of style of a player uh, in Rovers lineup, but we don't like up front and I know this formation does not it's not it's not how Blackman Rovers set up it's just an easy way to do it but you know I don't think we have that standout striker at the moment. Dominic Samuel's chipping in with a few goals, Graham's chipped in with a few goals and Tonneson's also chipped in a few in a few goals. But realistically they're not one of those die hard strikers and that's something I hope Tony Mowbray looks to address over the next well, in the transfer window. Anyway, we'll talk more about the transfer window later. Let's kick on forward and let's take a look at the statistics. We do have a outright goal scorer. Uh, apparently, the uh, dubious goals panel have given, given Bradley Dack that goal against Rochdale. Uh, it did look like it came off a defender, but it's been credited to Bradley Dack. So he's in double figures now. Next up, Charlie Mogg is only one behind. Next up, Dominic Savio with eight and Tonneson also with eight. Into the discipline. Smallwood's there with eight yellows. Bennett's got five. Evans has got five, and Williams has got five. Into the reds, Ben still tops this chart, and one that he doesn't want to be. He's got two reds, Sam's got one, Warren's got one, and Harper's got one. Let's take a look at the form book. Rovers' last five games look like this. Last time out, they beat Rochdale 2 0. Before that, they sort of stumbled to a 1 1 draw against Northampton. Before that, 2 0 victory at home against Charlton Athletic. Before that, it was a 1 0 win at Gresty Road in the FA Cup. And before that, a, a pretty tricky away match, which they picked up all three points. 
beating Peterborough 3 2. Let's take a look at our visitors now. Scumfort United coming into this, like I said at the top of the show, in fourth spot. This is the team I feel that will start the match against Blackburn at Ewood Park, Gilts, Townsend, Wallace, Goody, Burgess, Morris, Sutton, Holmes, Al Delcan. He's a 16 year old wonder kid who's come out of nowhere. Uh, and Van Veen and Hopper up front. Let's take a look at the full, or let's take a look at the statistics actually. Top of the goal scorers we mentioned at the top of the shot. Holmes there has got nine goals. Morris has got eight. Hopper's got five. And Novak has got four. Into the discipline. Bishop's got six yellows. Holmes is on five. Madden's on four. Wallace has got four yellows. As for the red cards, only one guy, and that's Bishop. He has one red card. Let's take a look at the form book for Scunthorpe United. Last time out, they picked up a away victory at Bloomfield Road against Blackpool. Before that, they picked up a home victory against Southend United. Before that, they stumbled to a 2-2 draw at home against Milton Keynes. But all the way back on Saturday, 9th of December, they stumbled to a 1-0 away defeat to Walsall. And before that, they lost at home in the Checker Trade Trophy against Leicester City's under-21 side. I think before that Checker Trade match, they were on some sort of crazy run where they won like six or seven of the bouts to put themselves in this good position that they find themselves in. We obviously played one game less than Scunthorpe. Um, and I think if we win this game against Scunthorpe, we might have a bit of a cushion between uh, fourth place. Obviously, I'd like, like us to, to get the three points. I'd like to see Shrewsbury and Wigan stumble a little bit, uh, and then hopefully we can actually we can actually squeeze into second spot right before the Rotherham game and apply up some more pressure onto Wigan, and maybe just maybe we can kick off New Year in first spot. But that's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts, and all that kind of stuff. A lot of things have to work in our favour for that to happen. But I was just I'm just happy to be in the mix. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the FA Cup break just to just to just to take a little you know back seat for a few days, give some of the first team guys a rest, and then you know the the, the FA Cup's match again Hull is is kind of like a uh, you know a, a no pressure game. If we win, amazing. If not, hey, it's just one less thing to worry about. Obviously, this is the second time Blackburn and Scunthorpe have met this season. Last, uh, earlier on in the season, back at their place, Blackburn picked up a 1-0 victory. And that was all the way back in September the 12th, 2017. And that result against Rochdale on Boxing Day continues Blackburn's impressive unbeaten run. Oh, they heard what oh, I'm about to say. Oh, oh. What does the gaff have to say? He's been talking after the match against Rochdale. This is an extended interview. Uh, obviously, I did cover his his words of wisdom after the match in the Rochdale review, but this is a bit of a Brucey bonus as he talks about the Scunthorpe United match this weekend. Yeah, I think so. I think um, I, I thought they started really fast and um, lots of adrenaline in them. I thought they came to have a go today to trade the game. I thought the team he picked had a lot of forward thinking players in it, and so um, yeah, we had to match their energy early on, which I thought we did really well and. And worked our way into the game, got a couple of goals, and we talked at half time about seeing the game out, about keeping the shape, seeing if we could score the third, and um, and yet you know we'll take two 0 a great clean sheet, and um, um, put the points in the bag, move on to the next one. I think really important because I, I think again they showed how um, intense they were in that first twenty minutes, half an hour or so. They uh, really started fast. Um, making it really competitive in central areas of midfield, um, making life difficult for Bradley to find space. Um, you know, and he's generally our inspirational spark to get the team going. And um, So yeah, it was difficult. And so the goals were, were came at a really pleasing time and 2-0 was always going to be difficult for them to get back. And yet they had a go second half. Um, they changed the formation a bit. We had to tinker with a few things. I was hoping we could score a third. And, um, it didn't. It didn't quite happen. We had a few opportunities, but what's important is the points. Um, in what are, in my opinion, they're difficult games. People expect you just to turn up and beat like Rochdale. I think he's, we scored four at their ground, and thinking it's going to be easy. It's never easy. It's uh, it's really tough. They've got an experienced manager who knows the game, um, and it's a real opportunity for them to come to a stadium like this and and, and have a real go. And yet, we saw their threat off. Thought the two central defenders were fantastic. I thought Bradley. The longer it went on, affected the game more and more, and um, yeah, ultimately we got the job done. But and used the squad. Yeah, I think so. I think we talked about a clean sheet, about not pushing the fullbacks on, not leaving space for transition, and getting counter attacked on too much. And um, and if we got a third, uh, because they over um, pushed too many men on, and um, that'd be great. Uh, ultimately, it stayed two nil. It's no problem to us. It's um, 
not a great concentration defensively. Or did David make one decent save? But, um, but let's put them points in the bag. Let's move on to the next game, which is obviously a tough game. I think Scunthorpe are flying at the moment. Had a lot of victories over their last, I don't know, seven or eight games. And um, you know, fancy coming here and, and trying to make life difficult for us. So it's just the next challenge, the next test. Uh, we'll see whether we're up for it on Saturday. Well, it doesn't surprise me. It shouldn't surprise anybody, really. He's, um, you know, he's, he's got bags of energy. He's had, obviously, a, a break. He's recharged his batteries. He's come back on full power and, um, you know, just chasing the goalkeeper like he did. You know, there was no right to really close down another 30, 40 yards on a back pass and managed to catch him and um, got the penalty. So, um, delighted for Elliot. Uh, I think it's been frustrating for him. You know, missed four games. Um, but he is a very key player for us. He gave me an opportunity to give Craig a breather, having been doing exceptionally well for us over the last three or four games as well, and having been out injured quite a while. So just utilising the squad, trying to get the best out of everybody, and um, yeah, let's see if we can keep winning as we make the two or three changes most games now over this you know, really busy period. Well, it's rest tomorrow, and then it's two-day building to the next game. It's, uh, it's important that you prepare for every, every opposition. Scunthorpe, as we say, are on a great run. They've got some very talented players. Um, you know, an impressive victory away at Blackpool today. So, you know, we know that uh, they're a confident side on a winning vein, which obviously gives them an extra yard in their step. And um, but we have to be just up for the challenge, up for the the um, the next hurdle we've been calling it. What's the next hurdle in front of us? We have to get over it. And, and Scunthorpe is the next hurdle, and see if we can keep our pretty long now unbeaten run going. Yeah, listen, it would obviously be nice, I think, uh, this time of year, as I've said in the past, I think a lot of people who work away or have moved their families away and yet come back to see families come back and, and they go to the match and so the crowds generally rise on Boxing Day, I think. It's, um, it's just pleasing for me that we managed to get a victory. You know, it wasn't our most fluent performance of the year, but um, still it was, a, it was a good victory, a clean sheet. Um, chances late on to get a third that didn't quite go for us on the break, but uh, we're generally pleased. Um, they're important wins them game when you look back over the season you, you'll sort of scan past Rochdale at home on Boxing Day as a 2-0 win and yet them three points are massive points and uh, we just have to keep going. I didn't really mind to be honest today it, um, somebody was going to drop points uh, both of them dropped points which is fine it just puts us back to where we were before Northampton game um, and you know the positive for us is that we have both of those teams coming to our stadium we've got to try and keep our pretty positive record at home now after you know after the early season we've got to try and make it a fortress keep it strong um, you know and, and when Wigan and Shoes become over the next few months we have to make sure we try and take the points on them days and that gap will naturally close and um, but yeah just keep putting the pressure on I'm sure they'll go back to the dressing room um, and seeing that Rovers won again and so we just have to uh, keep applying the pressure and, and see where it takes us. Well, you're well with the gap, I have to say, but one thing on social media, to be honest with you, not much. Obviously, it is the festive period. The games are coming thick and fast, and people are still talking about the Rochdale match, but there are still a few comments out there about the Scunthorpe game. Let's take a closer look. Obviously, Derek Williams, uh, he might have said this already, but not the best of games, but another three points and clean sheet. We get ready for Scunthorpe now. Uh, moving on with Stuart Franklin on the one, Jack Walker, Facebook page said good win today in reference to the Rochdale game hoping for a win against Scunny on Saturday to keep the pressure on Shrewsbury who have a tough game against South End obviously South End in 11th spot moving on Tom Martin on the League One banter group says so when are people going to start taking Scunny seriously as promotion contenders so that got a lot of people talking uh, Toby Skelton said if we don't lose at Blackburn then maybe after that Damian Roberts said if you get anything from us on Saturday obviously he must be a Rovers fan Callum McLennan said when they're in the top two playoffs are so unpredictable they look strong at the moment I ad will admit Joe Farr said people should be considering the Greens to beat Wigan to the title Andy Hamilton said the best team to come to Shrewsbury so far I, I am not surprised by the standard of football that uh, is going on at Scumfort. They were third place last season. It wasn't a one-trick pony. They've managed to, to replicate that form and are in the mix this time. Obviously, this season is, is, is a, seems to be a stronger league uh, than it was last season. Obviously, Shrewsbury upsetting the odds to be in second spot. Wigan were always going to be up there. Blackman, should, realistically, should always be up there. Bradford are a tough side. Peterborough are a decent side, and they're just about where they should be. Portsmouth coming in from League Two. 
uh, with a bit of momentum with them. Rotherham, another side that was relegated last season. They're in the mix. Charlton, Oxford, Southend. They're all, you know, the top 10, 11 teams are, are decent teams that could consider themselves uh, playoff contenders, if not promotion contenders. Obviously, even in the lower echelons of the league, Rochdale have, uh, have, have, have had an upsetting run recently. They should have been, uh, they, they should be considered as a top 10 side. Fleetwood also last season, they were in the mix and, and they're not doing that well at the moment. You know what, the Gaff has said, if you know what some of the fans have been saying, but what really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen this weekend against Comfort United. Let's take a look. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. The games are coming to an end for this mad period of uh, the season. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Games are coming to uh, the games are coming thick and fast, and we are going to be doing the Rotherham game in only a few days' time. Uh, I also give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out their forum, make sure you do so. There's a link in my description below. It's a great opportunity for you to talk to fans from all around the globe uh, or even just down the road. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook if you want to keep up with me on the go. So this weekend's match against Comfort was absolutely critical for Blackburn Rovers' promotion push. If we could pick up the three points at Ewood Park and start to turn uh, the ground into a bit of a fortress, maybe, just maybe, we can get a stranglehold on those top two spaces. Uh, obviously, we need something to go our way. Maybe Shrewsbury can stumble a little bit. I'd love to see Wigan stumble also to kind of... I don't really want to put too much pressure on Blackburn when we take on uh, uh, Wigan at Ewood Park. I don't want that. I do, I, I, I'd rather not have that game be uh, such a crucial point in the season. I'd like to be able to have a little bit of wiggle room, um, you know, because I could just I could just got bad vibes. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's, a, that's a game to talk about. Uh, further down the road. Coming up on my Blackburn Rovers Seas channel, there's going to be a January transfer window spectacular. That's going to be coming out in a day or so, probably. Uh... So that video will come out before kickoff. So um, check that out when it comes online. Obviously, we're going to be building up to the Rotherham game also, but before then, we're going to do the review of this match. Anyway, I've got to go. Uh, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.